Fresh DV's coverage of Cinegear is brought to you by Next Wave DV and Cinevate, tools for filmmakers and photographers. ICANN, features you need, prices you want. Kessler, innovative tools for filmmakers. Della Luce, your life, your style. We're here at Teradek, I'm talking to Mike, and uh, we're going to get an update on the latest model of the Cube. That's right, so this is the Cube 155. We've got something called the Cube 255, which just takes an HDMI camera output. So for those of you who don't know, the Cube will take any uh, camera output from SDI to HDMI to even analog. It will compress it using H.264 uh, compression, and then you can stream that video signal directly to an iPad or an iPhone to be used as a confidence monitor, or you can send it to a decoder back at Video Village, or you can use it as a proxy recorder, which means every time you hit start and stop on the camera, it's saving a compressed file onto a server, which can then be pulled up on your iPad to be reviewed, to be used as an instant daily, for example. So we released the new cubes back at NAB a, couple, a month or so ago. We're still selling the old cubes, but the new ones have the exact same functionality, they just have a number of new hardware refinements. So the biggest one is the new OLED screen here, which is going to give you a number of features right at your fingertips, which was something that we weren't able to provide on the old cubes. You can change. The old cube is done via like a web browser? Right. The old cube's got an old web uh, interface that you would have to log on using a laptop or an iPad. Now you can change the video bit rate, audio bit rates, uh, the resolution. Um, you can even connect to the, uh, the desired SSID access point of your choice. Now we also have uh, something uh, right here, dual antennas, which is MIMO technology that will enhance the communication performance between connections with iPads or your routers. Um, we also have a micro SD slot, which is right over, oh, it's actually on the front over here. And what that's going to do, you can see yeah, like right an SD card? card? Yeah, an SD card. And what that's going to do is as you're streaming, it's going to save a compressed file onto the card. So when you're done streaming, you pop it out, you throw it into your laptop, and you've got your files ready to go. And what size, like what, what kind of bit rate H.264 is that? You can set the bit rate all the way up to 6 megabits per second using Wi-Fi, up to about 13 or 14 over Ethernet. I mean, 6 megaseconds is a pretty decent proxy file. A 6 megabits per second, 720p video is beautiful. You can do 6 megabits per second, 1080, and it still looks great. So it's a really nice little recorder built into it. We've also got a brand new built-in Lion battery in here, which is going to give you about an hour to an hour and a half of runtime. So now what that means is when you've got it running off, say, an Anton Bauer battery and the battery dies, the cube no longer powers down. It keeps running. So you have time to swap batteries out and never have to power the unit down. But you shouldn't plan on using the Lion, the L Ion battery. Lion? Lion, lithium Lion. The Lion battery. <laughs> Uh, we shouldn't plan on using that full time. That's right. just a, a just a bridge technology way of connecting. Exactly. Or for quick, if you just need to do something really quick and do a monitor, uh, use it for monitoring. Then yeah, you can use it for about an hour to an hour and a half. We've also got a headphone output now, which means you can uh, monitor the audio of your stream, which we didn't have on the older cubes. And finally, we've got an on-off switch right here, which again, we didn't have. Usually, you would just plug the power in it, go, you take it out, you go, now you have control over that. Oh, and there's actually one more thing. You would charge the battery by the micro USB slot right up here. And this is actually more than just a charger. You can now plug your computer in to the cube using this USB instead of using an ethernet cable, which is what you used to have to do. So if you still want to get into the web interface to get into the nitty gritty of the cube, keyframe intervals, for example, that's how you can do it, USB or ethernet instead of just ethernet like the old ones. So what, what kind of price difference are you talking about for these refinements over the old cube? So there's about a $500 uh, price increase from the old cubes to the new cubes. Now again, the old cubes function just like the new cubes do, um, but many people are going to find that the ease of use is just so much much more on this new cube that $500 is really no difference when you can change many of the best settings on the cube instantaneously and you've got reliability in the battery and better communication performance with the dual antennas. So is, have there any any updates on the, the red proxy module uh, that you guys sell? Is that still sold separately? So it, it's not a module, it's just a software license. It's completely free and it's not just on red cameras, it's on any camera with an SDI connection. So you can do this with the Canon C300, with the RE Alexa, any of the reds, you name it. So that runs on like a MacBook Pro or whatever on set and it's instead of uh, well, in, in addition to iPads or anything else is monitoring, it's also capturing a stream or recording it locally, is right. that right? So you can be monitoring the stream while you're uh, getting a proxy recording saved onto the, the computer of your choice. Right. Yes. So you can pull a playback 
off camera. So yes. the camera can be moving somewhere else and somebody else, like an agency, could be looking at the takes Precisely. at their own convenience. Precisely. And you can pull it up using an iPad or a laptop or anything else that's connected to wherever your server is set up to receive the proxy recordings. Wow, okay, so yeah, now you're streaming from that MacBook Pro to anyone else. Yes, exactly, and we actually have a solution for that, it's called the Teradek Case. The case is just a Mac Mini, an Airport Extreme, some custom software solutions that we provide, and what that does is two things. Number one, it bounces the cube signal, so up to 25 different devices can monitor in real time, so iPads, iPhones, laptops, you name it. In addition to that, it's saving the proxy files onto the Mac Mini server. So after every start and stop, a new file is created, and anybody connected to that case, again, 25 units, can pull that proxy file up at, into LightIron's live play, make some comments, save it, and anybody else can see those comments, and it's an entire workflow right there. It's pretty slick. It's pretty awesome. Very recently, I believe about NAB time, Ari opened up the API to their Alexa. And what that means is they're allowing third-party developers to build out software solutions to remotely control their cameras. So what Teradek has done is we've taken this API and we built it into Terra Central, which is our free application for the iPad and the iPhone. This is what people are monitoring this on. This is what people are monitoring on. So right now you can monitor what's coming out of your RE Alexa, but you can also change a bunch of the features wirelessly. Exposure index, white balance, shutter angle, frames per second, overlay and record start stop. Exactly. And what this means is in real time you can change these things literally on the fly, no problem, all wirelessly. Record, green light goes on, hit stop, red light goes on. That's pretty cool. And in the future, as Ari begins to expand its API, we'll have more and more features built into our application. So in the near future, the sky's the limit. How's it working? Like, you, you're, you're having to go through the cube to make all this happen. Correct. So you can only do this with the cube. And so right now, the cube is connected to the Ari via the SDI cable. Now, we don't transmit the data over the SDI. We transmit it over an Ethernet data port that goes into the Alexa down here. This is what's sending the commands that we're getting out of Terra Central through the cube and into the Alexa. It's pretty cool. So in the near future, it won't just be Ari. We're hearing that a number of manufacturers are going to be releasing their APIs. So you can expect Teradek to be at the forefront of developing wireless uh, remote control into Terra Central for a number of different cameras in the future. Is that going to be a paid app, or, or is that just going to be included with Terra Central? Right now, this Ari control application will be completely free. In the future, I can't say. I would imagine it will likely be free. <laughs> where, where can people find more information about the Cube? and your other mobile solution? So all of the information we provide on our website, which is just teradek.com. Um, if you'd like cube-specific information, you can go to teradek.com slash the new cube. The new cube. Yes. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Stay tuned for more coverage of Cinegear 2012.